Yeah. yeah. Can you okay. hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I wish I were there on the, in the parade. I don't know. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a uh, there's a march happening right behind us. Yes, you may be yes. able to see it and hear it. I can see it and hear it. I wish I were there instead of here. It's pretty, you can just watch it behind us. It'll be like okay. the same thing almost. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's oh. introduce Dan Bukatinsky. Um, he's a scandal, which is a show everyone talks about. And also, if as if that wasn't enough, he's also part of the web series It Got Better. So first off, Dan, happy Pride again. Thank you. Thanks so much. Awesome. Uh, happy, so you're happy Pride to you guys. I just said happy Pride. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. All right, we'll ask Dan some questions, yes, which also if you have questions in a minute. All right, so you're collaborating with Lisa Kudrow on It Got Better. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the project and where people can check it out? Yeah, yeah. Well, Lisa Kudrow and I have been partners for 12 years, and we do a show called Who Do You Think You Are? And then we were lucky enough to meet up with and want to collaborate with Dan Savage. And we sort of thought, what would be the merging of our show, Who Do You Think You Are, with It Gets Better? And I got very excited about the idea of telling the story, telling individual profiles of prominent individuals, not just telling people that it gets better, but talking about when in their lives their insurmountable obstacles felt or became surmountable. And um, we were lucky enough to get um, some funding from L Studio, which is where web therapy started. And we were able to do six beautiful profiles. Laverne Cox, Jane Lynch, Tim Gunn, George Takai, Tegan and Sarah. Um, I'm forgetting somebody, but, uh, oh, oh, and Jason Collins. And all of them, all of them are up live now on lstudio.com. And it's a really beautiful way for each one of them to talk about their childhood, their growing up, their coming out and the historical context of the gay rights movement and where their personal stories intersected with it. So it's a yeah. real passion project for us. Wonderful. And you know, you mentioned It Gets Better and you're building on the success of that. So what do you hope to achieve with the web series? Well, we're hoping to make many, many more profiles of many more people. And hopefully mm -hmm. down the line, we've got 40, 50, 60 profiles wow. that can really help and inspire young people not just to learn that it eventually it gets better, but to also learn about how what feels like is an insurmountable obstacle is in fact surmountable if you surround yourself with the right people and you get the support that you need. So more than anything, I'm really hoping that it, it sort of pays it forward to the next generation and leaves a legacy of stories of those of us who are in our, you know, some. People in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s all have different struggles. And if you hear about all of them, you sort of, you get inspired. Yeah. You mentioned some of the big names that you've had on the show. Who do you think story has really resonated with people and why? Wow. Um, I think Laverne Cox uh, is our one transgender story. And it's a really beautiful story about her, you know, what the obstacles were for her uh, mother to understand her, and it comes full circle. It's a great story. Tim Gunn tells a story that goes back as far as the 50s, and then, you know, he was uh, hospitalized for depression right around the time that the American Psychiatric Association declassified homosexuality as a mental illness. So there's a real tentpole in history that intersected with his story. Um, people really resonated with that one. And Tegan and Sarah are 30 years old. They're really young. And so I feel like different people from different generations have sort of tapped into a different profile. But the response has been amazing. And Lisa and I are very proud of it. Yeah. So you've been really open about being bullied growing up. Do you have any piece of advice that you would give to teenagers who are maybe going through a similar situation? <clears throat> You know, I have to tell you, it's, 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 a, it's a terrible thing. I've oftentimes thanked the bullies who made my life miserable when I was uh, in middle school because they really fueled me to want to prove them wrong. And I think a lot of times learning to, to push away somebody else's fear and hatred because it's really their own fear and hatred to help fuel you to, to become whoever it is that you're eventually going to become. I mean, I don't think I, in a million years I imagined I'd one day be playing a gay dad, the husband of the chief of staff on a television show. 
when I have a husband and kids at home myself. But I think back in seventh grade, I only dreamed that I would be able to prove all the bullies wrong. And rather than letting them win, I let their hatred fuel me to become who I wanted to become. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay, so, so we have to talk about scandal because okay. everyone talks about it. All right, so in your role, you play an openly gay journalist in Washington, and we want to know what kind of response you've gotten for the role. Well, I got a great response while I was playing the role. I did it for three seasons. It was a it was a great opportunity to play not just a husband, but the husband of somebody in politics and a husband who was dying to adopt and have a baby. You know, the whole idea of having a work marriage in Washington and wanting to have a family, but also being ambitious about their career, all those issues came about. And we just happened to be two men. I think that we've grown to a place where you can just have a relationship that is complicated, where one of the many things about you is that you're gay. It's not the only thing about you. So I think that was one of the things that resonated about us. And we were probably, as sick as this sounds, because my husband took out a hit on me, um, we were the healthiest marriage on this show. Mm -hmm. So until I was, spoiler alert, murdered at the end of last season, um, we had what was pretty much the only stable relationship on the show. So that speaks a lot about the kind of show we were dealing with. <laughs> cool. But the, the response so we like to play amazing. a little game at Mashable, and it's called okay. 10 Second Plots. And we ask people from TV shows and big fans to describe a television show in 10 seconds or less. So we want to challenge you to describe Scandal in 10 seconds or less. I'll time okay. you. Okay. And go. Uh, explosive, crazy, edgy, um, soapy, frothy, fraught, sexy, torturous. Great. That was a really good job. That's great. Good Thank job. you so much, Dan. We're going to send it over to Brian. Okay.